A very warm welcome back to E-Racing GP round four of six of season three. Two races already been uh, taking place today where we've seen a uh, real drama. If you're watching that uh, race in the bronze edition, real controversy and real drama in the second race in particular. Uh, we've also had the uh, initial boys as well. We're now onto the silver and the gold. And Alex, your thoughts ahead of this, Jim Masvilt and Dylan Tan. Good races, both yeah. there, the guys at the top of the table as we come into the second half of the season. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to call, you know, because we've all seen them. They've not, not, none of them have been super consistent. They've all made mistakes this season. So we've seen them make those mistakes. Um, and really, if you're going to win this championship, you know, we've got three more rounds, including today, remaining. They have to be more consistent. You know, Troy eyman has been really quick, um, but he spun out. Um, Ms. Vilton's also had one bad race as well. Harris has been quick as well, but he hasn't been able to put it into the races yet. So um, a lot can still happen and, and it's going to be really hard to call. A reminder once again that you are allowed to drop one set mm. of results at the end of the season so you can have a bad weekend but you'd much rather have a choice yeah. going into the final weeks of the season so that is still to come. Right, talk to me about the format that you've decided. I'm assuming we're, we're going two 15-minute races, reverse grid which means yeah. tactics very much come into play. Yeah, so the, all day today, all the classes, it's a two 15-minute sprint races but the second one is a reverse grid. Um, it's a half half grid reversed. Uh, and we decide with a throw of the dice how, what position it gets reversed. Um, and um, I can't even remember what it is. That's so to prevent drivers to try and drive to that position. Uh, so no one really knows which as position. As if they would, Alex, as if, as if they would. Of course they would. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be exciting. But for the last two rounds of the championship, we would do reverse grid races for silver and gold, um, which would be very interesting. So championship grids reversed. That's going to, and they're going to be back to the long races with pit stops. Brilliant stuff. So we're getting down to the business end of the season. We're at uh, the um, Hock, Hocken, uh, Hockenheim ring as well, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a very tricky track. There's an yeah. awful lot of driving that you've got to do yeah. here. You've not got less of the sweeping um, straights that you've had yeah. in the America tracks up to now. Yeah, and the American tracks, a lot of them are kind of old school. Um, the Hockenheim, well, the new Hockenheim at least, is very much like the uh, Tokodrome. It's, it's very much like that. Um, and it's one of the Joker tracks. Uh, we are supposed to be doing the American edition, so it's mostly American tracks. But because we only have six American tracks on Race Room, um, and we like to throw up surprises, we decided to have two Joker tracks, one or two Joker tracks. I'm not letting people know how many Joker tracks we, we're going to use. And this weekend, we wanted the Joker tracks, and that's why we're in Germany. You're just mean, you are, fella, <laughs> just mean. Okay, let's get on to this particular category already, the silver category. We've mentioned the, the championship. Are we able to have a look at the championship standing so we can just pick out some of the, the, the people to really look out for? Yeah, let, let's have a look at it. Top of the pile, Jin Masvilton, 77 points for the Singaporean. The youngster, Dylan Tan, is got himself 72 points. Harry Zeffi, the best of the Malaysians. Oli Aquino leading a very strong Filipino challenge. Please log on to Facebook and give us your comments throughout uh, this race. Um, and the Filipinos, they, they need to make a move pretty soon, Alex, if they're going to really uh, cut into Jan, uh, Jin and Dylan's lead over the top of the standings. Yeah, exactly right. They, they, they will need to try and have to close those gaps. Um, I mean, Singapore won two at the moment. Dylan Tan, though, as well. He had a great um, last race where he won. So that was super good, too. We also have a, a, a National Nations Cup. Philippines as we suggested, are doing pretty well. This is an accumulation of the top two results of each category uh, from copper, bronze, silver and gold. Accumulation Philippines, 328 points. Singapore, well represented, of course, by uh, Jim, uh, Jim Masvilton and Dylan Tan. They're second ahead of Malaysia. Malaysia, not too far behind. Good Hong Kong representation in their silver class as well. So they'll be hoping to pick up some points in the Nations Cup. And the other category that we operate through is the Teams Cup to give uh, some recognition to those of us who supported on this e-racing uh, GP Global Edition journey. We are in Season 3. 
three remarkably it started down as a bit of fun to cover the lockdown and it's now uh, developed into a life of its own so our thanks to the likes of sim racing filipinas who are top of the standings with 244 points stratos motorsports they are easy to pick out in the last two races that we're going to see or last two categories we're going to see tedco x legion of race of course will be very strong anyone who's a accumulated over 107 points in the first three rounds has got to be respected but also we'll hope to see the likes of uh, Oz and New Zealand uh, sim racing team uncle uh, racing line rough esports blue steel and seven star begin to make a challenge so our thanks to all of those who are competing in the team's cup but it's all about the guys on the circuit itself and um We've just got the last, what, uh, six minutes or so of practice. And Tony Fock is one of the uh, Hong Kongers who we've spoken about. He's in his second season of e-racing, Alex. Uh, are you expecting him to be able to make up some of the ground on those leading Singaporeans? Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he's, he's been, when he's quick, he's quicker. He's very, very quick. Um, and when he joined us last season, he, he was also very consistent. But since we've gone to the F3 car, that consistency has disappeared a bit. Maybe he's not as comfortable with the car as, as he usually is. So the pace has been a bit up and down. Um, well, with Harris Shimey at the moment, um, he's another driver that's very quick, but he hasn't really converted that pace into proper race wins. Remember the very first, oh, and he goes off in a big way. That's a, that's a crash. Yeah, that's start again crash. on that one, Harris. Yeah. <laughs> Remember he was leading round one, the first race, and then he made that mistake. So... Um, he's got to put it together. Um, he's not done so well in that way. Uh, Just looking at Harris, he, he did pick up uh, points in round one. He got himself a fourth place hmm. in mid-Ohio. But uh, last week, he had um, a second place in race one, but only picked up two points. So he has picked up points. He's third in the standings, but he's 25 points off the off the uh, championship leader. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But with his pace, yeah. So he'll be, you know, three more rounds to go. He can still turn it around, but he really needs to do it this weekend. He needs to try if he really wants, I feel, if he's going to mount a proper championship challenge, he's not far, like you said, but he needs to put his stake in the ground and say that I'm a proper challenger and he needs to win this weekend. He Tempor needs to Temporarily, you're in charge of the directing just for the moment, Alex. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the likes of Oli Aquino if he is out on track as well because he's another who had a really good uh, race one and two, 20 points in each of those, no points last weekend. So he has had his bad weekend, yeah. cannot afford another one. Yeah, and he's... Um, that's right. He was with the Seven Star Garage uh, team. So, yeah, and he's really experienced this driver. He's very good on the iRacing platform. Race room's kind of new to him still, and it's not his favored platform. Uh, but we know he's got the experience. And he, he's maximized his speed, I feel. Um, you know, he's got the results when he needed to. Uh, but he needs to find a bit more speed, I feel, if he's going to win a race. In these single-seater Formula cars, what is the circuit like? Are you able to generate speed, or are you yeah. constantly on your brakes and uh, going down the gears because of the number of corners involved? Well, actually, we have a lap. Why don't we take a lap with Jason Tay? Um, he's, this is a lap in the IndyCar, which is coming out later after this race, uh, these two races in the Gold Class. But they're both single-seaters, um, so you get a real good feel of what uh, it's like to drive the Hockenheim ring. Hello everyone, my name is Jason and today I'll be taking you for a lap around the Hockenheim ring in my Indy car. So here we are on the start finish straight, uh, going to turn 1. Just a small leap of the throttle, going to turn 1 and then hard on the gas after the apex. And then hard on the brakes at the 100 meter board for this corner. You're, you want your car to be as straight as possible coming out of it, as it leads you onto a very long straight. So the exit of that corner is so important. Not you'll lose plenty of time going through here. Lots of overtaking opportunities at the end of this straight as it leads you to happen, uh, the slowest corner of the track. On the brakes, try not to lock your wheels like I did. Uh, slowly you get on the gas on the exit. Uh, want to control wheel spin off there as well as it leads you on to another long straight. On the brakes, just after the 100 meter board. Roll the car in and get on the power and flat out through here. Let the downforce of the Indy car do the work. And there's a small lift of the throttle turning into the stadium section right now. Coops the car into the corners right here. Flat out through here. And then let off the gas and let the car turn in into the apex. Gas a bit and then let the car turn in again and then hard on the gas for the final corner. Onto the main street, and that's the lap of the Hockenheim Ring. 
Very nicely done as well, it must be said. And uh, you do have to drive that circuit. I've got, I've got to yeah. say, there was, he was working pretty hard there. His voice was very, very calm, but mm. his hands were working overtime. Yeah, especially in IndyCar. IndyCar, he got so much wheel spin. They're always fighting that. Formula 3 car, you don't have that much wheel spin. It's kind of underpowered car for the grip that they have, as we watch Tony Fock right now. Um, so it's all about being very smooth. These cars, they move just a little bit. You lose a lot of lap time. So you really got to try and make sure the cars and rails, um, you have to be very smooth. Um, these are great cars for driver training because you cannot be quick with these cars with any bad habits. So, so it, it's, it's, it's why Formula 4, Formula 3 is a great proving ground when you go in Formula 1 or, or Le Mans or something because it really teaches you the discipline of, of driving precisely without making mistakes, but like Tony just made there. Um, so when you can do that and you're quick there, and, and if you learn these good habits, it helps you in every car you drive. Tony, using the full extremities out there, maybe we can have a look at another Hong Kong racer, Leon Leo Young, who won a category last year, hasn't really been able to transfer that. He had picked up points in races one and two, nothing last week for Triple L. So again, he's had a, his bad weekend. Um, you ex were you expecting him to kick on a bit because he's, yeah. he's come up a category yep. um, and he's, he's, he's doing okay, but yeah. a zero points last time out really hurts. Yeah, I mean, he won bronze category in um, the last season. So yeah, I, I expected him to kick on. I mean, he didn't. And, and you notice all these cars we're looking at, they're, they're all teammates because they run the blue cars. Um, Leong in and, and Tony Fokker from Hong Kong and they have a partnership with uh, Tedco Racing which is why Harris Sefi is also in the blue car as well so but yes I was triple L here as we like to call him uh, we did expect better from him um, he has been quick on the leaderboard the weekly leaderboard I've seen him a couple times be right up there but it hasn't translated into the race uh, and maybe that's just a little bit more experience needed to, to, to extract that last little bit Okay, just before we go into qualification, which is coming up in a, just a few seconds time, let's have a, a look at, at uh, the starting uh, racers who we've got and the colours they'll be wearing. It's what we call the spotter's guy. Meant to watch out for the all dark, the sinister dark, Jim Musvilton, Dylan Tan. If we can have him on Zoom in the bottom right hand screen, you'll see he's a diminutive young character with uh, bags of enthusiasm. Justin Hung in the uh, distinctive yellow is worth looking out for. Ryan Keats from Singapore is known to be quick. I mentioned the uh, Filipino challenge for Stino Garrido and Seb Tagulo and Mark Voltaire Elman have all had their moments uh, in the top series of, of, of races. Further down, international record. Brad McCombs, who's not been able to really uh, con um, concern the leaderboards too often, but the American is, uh, well, he's registered. Whether or not he's on the circuit, I'm not quite sure at the moment. And continuing the international theme, Noah O. He's uh, in his second season with E Racing GP. He is on the starting lineup as well. So qualification has started. Um, you were on board with Jin Masvilton. Do you want to stick with him, Alex, and yeah. maybe just talk us around the Hockenheim ring? Yeah, so this is the championship leader, Jin Masvilton, from Singapore, and he's gone purple in Sector 1. Um, doesn't mean much at this point because I think he's the first car on track as well. Six minutes qualifying, so you will get a couple laps. Now this long, long straight where all the overtaking happens. To break for turn six, you got to spot your braking just perfect. Doesn't matter if you miss the apex, Jin gets a good job there of hitting the apex. But if you break late and miss the apex, that's fine as long as you're able to get on the power early. Now through turn seven, easy flat. Um, turn eight, this left hander, very tricky here, very easy to snatch a front left tire under brakes and miss the apex. It's important you get to the apex there because you want to set up nicely for this right hander here. Should be flat in a Formula 3 car. Um, now this next corner here, this is really good fun. Turn 11, mobile one corner. This gets you into the stadium section of Hockenheim. Um, I think it's flat, almost flat as well. Now these bits here, these corners, you've got to carry a real good flow through this corner. You can see that they are cambered. Oh, he's made a mistake here. Finish the lap though, you want to get a banker down. They're heavily cambered and if you, oh, he misses the apex there as well. So it's a bit messy. And if you make one small mistake, it kind of costs you time all the way through because you need a flow through there. So a bit of a scrappy lap. I don't think that'd be good enough for pole position. Um, and in, in fact, he's going to, yeah, it's P6 at the moment because Harris Zeffi is now in pole position. The Malaysian has done a great lap um, and he restarts again a 32.5. 132.5 is pretty good, but it's only ten, one tenth of a second quicker than Tony Fock. Dylan Tan also pretty quick, but five tenths, six tenths down. We're on board with Dylan Tan now. This uh, um, hairpin 
really does slow you down. But if you can get a good line out of that, Alex, it can set you up for the lap. Yeah, so now we're riding on back on board with him. Let's watch him as he goes through the rest of the lap. Had a little bit of um, movement into the hairpin, but that can help with the rotation as long as you're able to get the power down. And we don't really know. Oh, I got sideways through there again. Dylan's looking a little bit aggressive here. I, I was talking about those sideways movements. When you have that in a Formula 3 car, you do lose time. So although he's going green through sector 1, let's... Whoa! Purple through sector 2! I was going to say those sideways movements do cost you time, but it hasn't cost Dylan any time. He's purple in sector two. He's a tenth up. This could be good enough for Paul. He's looking calm, cool, calm and collected. Whoa, okay, let's get on the apex, carry the speed. That looks just about right. Oh, has a small moment there. But we've seen him have a couple small moments on this lap. Is this good enough for Paul? We'll find out. Yes, it is. Oh, it's very, very tight. But Dylan Tan... Has got himself up there. Harris Zeffi is the man who's still on there. No, Dylan Tan, only third fastest, Alex. I thought yeah. I saw the screen go purple, but third fastest only. Second row of the grid, Harris Zeffi still holding on. Yeah, so let's watch Jin Maz Vilton there. He's on a good lap as well, but he's just a little bit out. Let's also look at Harris Zeffi, see if he's... He's, ha he's restarted. This is, he has a, another couple of chances to do. He's purple at the moment, but uh, this is him in sector one. Let's go back to Jin Maz Vilton now. He's in the last sector. Oh, wow. He's a tenth down in sector two still. So almost two tenths down. So sector three has to be special. This is where he lost his time on his first lap. Much better. Much better through there for Jin Maz Vilton. Oh, Oh, did he go too far? I, I think that might be okay. Will he have track limits? He's not sure. He does improve. He's only three tenths off. But that third uh, sector is better by his standards, but still not good enough if he wants to challenge for pole position. Harris Zeffi, though, he's going, wow, two tenths in sector two. He's going to improve. We talked about him at the top of the show, that this is the man that needs to prove that he can bring his pace and put it on pole and win a race. He's looking on course for that. 32.5 is on pole at the moment, and I think he's improving this lap again. Gets out of the last corner. Harris F, you can see in the bottom right, he's happy with that lap. He's celebrating. 32-1. Nice lap. Let's, Tony Fook is now up to second. You do get the emotion with Harris Zeffi. One minute remaining in qualification. So only those guys who are actually out on the circuit will have a chance to get um, an improvement. Ryan Keith on di with Dylan Tan on the second row of the grid. Uh, Sky is in P5. Uh, Troy Iman in P6. Ms. Vilton, Alex, only in P7. Now then, I, I think Troy Iman may well have enough time to try to put a, a good lap in, but he's a long way down on Harris yeah, four tenths in sector one. That's a huge amount. Um, and sector one is, uh, it's, they're all hard, but of the three sectors, sector one is the easiest. So that's not looking good for him at all. Yeah, and sector two is a mess as well. So Troy's not going to improve. But he is in front of this man, J uh, Jin Mas Vilton. Jin Mas Vilton, championship leader, P7. Wow. And Dylan Tan, P3. But Harris Zeffi, we said he needs a good weekend. He's been given a good start for Team Itachi. He's alongside Tony Fock on the front row of the grid. It's Malaysia, Hong Kong. Singapore, Singapore on the second row. Macau through Sky Lai. And Tony Iman on the third row. Mas Vilton has to start down in P7. So, that didn't go to plan as far as Jim Vilton um, was concerned, but it certainly did for Harry Zeffi. Yeah, so Harry Zeffi has pole position. He's had pole position before, uh, like I said, first round, but then he, he, he spun off, didn't he? So he didn't really get the win that he wants. So now, can he translate? He's got his teammate, Tony Fock, there in second position. They're both in blue cars. Um, further back, though, Dylan Tarn in third. He's second in the championship. This could be his chance. He won the last round as well. So this could be his chance to try and make inroads into the championship leader's um, lead. He racing GP. It is the Global Edition Silver category. We have got the first of two races. You can see at the Hoffenheim Ring Circuit, the man on pole position, Tony Fock, next to Harris Zeffi. Harris on the right, or oh, sorry, Harris on the left. We can there, we see him in the blue. Tony Fock also in the blue as well. It's a solid start from Harris Zeffi. We are underway. Tony Fock drops into P3. Dylan Tan has also made a decent start, and it's nice and clean. Off the start, and Harris Zeffi so far perfect. Behind him, Dylan Tan is challenging Tony Fock, and Dylan Tan gets himself into P2. 
Nice move there, Dylan Tan in the white and blue car, white and black car, sorry, into P2, Tony Fox into P3, oh, car running wide there, there's contact as well, Jin Masvilton on the inside there, he's, he's three, three by three side with Ayman and Sky as they come down the long straight. Wow. Eight cars have got themselves a, a little bit clear, Martin is a, a long way back. As they go oh. through, Dylan Tan has made a really good line answer there. And Dylan Tan is challenging Harry Zephian. Dylan Tan edges his nose cone in front. And Dylan takes the lead. A little bit of a, a look up to the screen. But he is very happy. That's terrific from Dylan. Yeah, that's really good lap by Dylan. Really took his time, took his moment. Um, this is a big, big question now for Harry Zephi, though. Can he take back that lead? Can he win on his own? You know, this is where he needs to make the to show that his speed can translate into racecraft. Also, I just want a quick note to Jin Mas Vilton. He had a big late break at turn six, almost lost his front wing. And if he had lost his front wing, championship leader would have been out of this race. But so he has got himself up into P5, Alex. Yes. That's really worth noting as Dylan Tan leads the way. We are on board with Dylan. Uh, he's in the screen bottom right, and they go through the end of the first lap. He leads from Harris Zephi. Tony Fock, the teammate of Harris, just behind them. Ryan Keith, and then we have Ms. Vilton. We're on board with Harris, and it uh, looks like they've got a line coming through there, but pressure from Tony Fock, and Tony just edges on the inside and Harris has gone from P1 to P3 inside four corners. Yeah, so Harris made a mistake at turn one, missed the apex and ran wide on the curb and that allowed his teammate through. So this is the thing we're talking about, you know, Harris needs to be mistake free in the race if he's going to win. Still, a long way to go, 12 minutes, he could come back in the meetup. Well, just behind him, though, Ryan Keith in fourth position. Yeah, we rarely talk about Ryan, but he, he does put in some consistent drives. Um, just looking at where he is in the standing. He's nowhere in the standings, to be fair. But he's all, we always seem to see him in the top five or six. He, he picked up uh, five points last time out, three from qualifying, two from the race. Oh, and then he spins right on cue. That is probably why Ryan Keith hasn't got anywhere in the championship standings, Alex. Yeah, so that'd be not a good good lap for him at the moment. Uh, it's allowed Jans Mansfilton. Mansfilton, though, he's um, well, he's in between two teammates. He's got uh, Ayman in front of him, and he's got Daniel Martin right behind. The two Stratos drivers, Stratos Motorsport drivers, who are very, very fast go-karters in their own right. Um, are either side of Jim Masvilton. Um, Masvilton, really, he needs to get in front of both of these cars. So Dan, uh, Dylan Tan is still the man leading the way. Tony Fox second, Harris Zephi third, Troy Ayman is in P4, Masvilton in five. We're on board with, uh, or we were temporarily on board with Jim Masvilton. They're a long way down, Alex. Uh, you look at that down the main straight, and those front three, Dylan, uh, uh, Tony and Harris, have been able to pull away. Yeah, so Harris has even dropped back a little bit from them. But um, yes, the other cars behind, they, they need to try and go with them. Oh, it's, oh, Daniel Martin slipped back down as well. He's had a mistake or something because he's dropped off from this battle um, for, for fourth position. Um, so he's there, there. He's going backwards as well. Triple L, Leon, Leon, Leon is um, the one that's managed to overtake him into turn six down the inside. Nicely done in the blue car. Um, there's oh, there's a black car in the background. Just whoa, coming from way behind. I think that was Mohammed Khalif, um, but he managed to survive for now. Yeah, a couple of collisions going on in there. Triple L is uh, working himself currently in P8 as we speak. Um, ahead of them, Tony. He's the man putting pressure on Dylan Tan, but Dylan's been able to pull nearly a second out on Tony from Hong Kong. In fact, it's now over a second, and they're pulling a bit of time over Harris Zephi as well. There, there seems to be no situation as Wei Xiong gets a, a drive-through penalty for ignoring slowdown warnings. Um, so Wei Xiong in, in the bad books. We're on board with Troy Ayman. Ayman currently in P4, but how are Dylan and Tony being able to pull away from these uh, second, and th third and fourth cars Alex yeah so they are so but I mean Troy had for the, the previous lap had a was had him Jim Vilton all over his back but he's stretched that gap now so he can focus on the battle in front um th this is a good thing when you see the drivers back up drop from your rear view mirror because it allows you to focus on front focus on putting the lap together and that's what Troy needs to do now if he can be mistake free maybe he can get um onto the battle for the for the lead from for the 
three cars in front of him. I suppose the good news for him, he's got best part of 10 minutes to do that. And so long as he can drive consistently, that's all well and good. But Dylan Tan, as they come down this long straight, Ooh, under Whoa. pressure there from Tony Fock, but he doesn't seem to be making any mistakes. Where behind uh, Tony Fock, who's got Harry Seffi a second down on him. So this is the, the genuine battle for the race lead. Nice, clean lines from Dylan Tan. He's a youngster, but seems to know this track pretty well, Alex. Yeah, so Dylan Tan out there in front. He looks very calm. He won his first big race with us. It wasn't a reverse grid. It was a proper, the first race um, in the last round. And I think that's done wonders for his confidence because look at that. He's just gone straight through. He's showing his confidence. Whoa, Sefi! Sefi goes off. He has a big spin. Ah, oh, wow. Uh, again, we have talked about it too often. He's so quick, but he makes too many mistakes and uh, devastating. The pole man, the guy that was leading, is now in position five. But the good news for him is he hasn't lost too much ground. He is in P5. Masvilt and the championship leader did go through. He's under pressure from Hung from uh, Hong Kong and Asmi from Malaysia is in P7 as well, but Harry Zephy always gives us something a little bit spectacular. Of that, you can be guaranteed. Yeah, and back at the front there, look at this. I tell you what, look at that. Tony Falk is also close the gap. He's close enough in the slipstream. Oh, didn't get the exit he needed. Oh, something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong. It has. He's had to pull right off uh, Maybe he's got a, a penalty there that might... Oh, well, well, he's been overtaken there by Troy Eyman. Wow. Ms. Vilton will go through as well. You picked the perfect time to go on board with Tony Fock. Um, uh, I tell you, I, I had him down as a grizzled old fella <laughs> driving wow. in this. And then the Zoom showed us his anguish as he had to take his foot off the gas. But he's not slowed down significantly, yeah. Alex. He's still holding on to P4. Maybe he had a track limits warning and has, um, uh, had a go slow. So the AI takes care of all the track limits. So if you go over the track limits, you will get a, a, a warning that you must go slow. Um, but that's what that meant is, of course, is Dylan Tan is unchallenged at the front now. He's got a huge gap. And Troy Eyman is in second position. Uh, and he's dragging Jin Masvilton, the championship leader, with him. Yeah, Masvilton is beginning to... I'm not going to say make up ground. They're losing ground on Dylan Tam. But Iman in the green and yellow stratus. Ms. Vilton behind them. We're on Troy Iman. Lovely shot of the of the cupboards behind his, uh, his, his rig there. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. We'll work on your camera work in a while. But you can see from that shot, he is very, very focused. Because right behind him, he has got Ms. Vilton. Harris Zeffi is beginning to make a move behind them on Tony Fock. There they are on the two blue cars. Harris has recovered from his. Uh, well, his spin and has got himself back in the groove, Alex. Not too much damage to the vehicle. Yeah, seems to be okay at the moment. Let's go back to the championship leader, though. He's right all over the back of, Mas of Iman. Masvilton's found some pace. He was struggling a couple laps ago. He's all over the back of Iman. Iman's not defending. I'm surprised he wasn't pulling over to the right. He's pulling over to the right now. It's a bit late. Masvilton's just going to go down the inside, sails down the inside, makes it look easy. And, uh, whoa, but look at that. Ayman, with a good uh, exit out of the last corner, is back in front now. And, uh, yeah, so he just focused on the exit. He got the exit he wanted. Will he defend the inside now? Yes, he does. He defends the inside, forces Mads Vilton to go to the outside. He has to meet the apex. Makes it, oh, gets it sideways. So, oof, some messy, scrappy driving. The pressure's starting to tell. Um, and who is going to come out on top of this battle? Yeah. They're coming into the mobile corner, as you say, in front of the grandstands, which even without COVID, uh, there's good social distancing. Glad to see Race Room doing their bit. They go round sacks onto 13 and 14. So Masvilton got his move, but didn't make the most of the hairpin uh, overtaking manoeuvre that he had, Alex. And yeah. that suggests maybe he's slightly underpowered. Uh, I, I just, he went down the inside, um, and that hairpin is all about traction. That's why sometimes it's not important to hit the, the apex. Um, and Ayman was just able to get the foot down and get the car straighter a bit earlier than Masvilton, and that's why he was able to uh, outdrag the championship leader. And wow, look at that. He's, and and Masvilton's having to slow down. I don't know why, but he's just gone off the pace again. And now he's got a challenge from Tony Fock. Tony yeah. Fock has just closed down that gap. Uh, Tony Fock has. That means Harry Zephy has had another moment, Alex. He has dropped down into P6, eight and a half seconds off the lead. Pretty clear from Paul Fostino and Triple L. Uh, Leung in P7 and 8, respectively. 
We are here on board with Tony Fock. He's got Ms. Vilton in front of him. This is where Ms. Vilton was able to make the move in the previous lap with Troy Ammon. Cannot do on this occasion. So it's interesting. Everybody seems to have had a moment. There's the drive-through yeah. penalty we saw from Tony. Ms. Vilton got through and then has had to slow Ooh. down. Uh, once again, Tony Fock makes a, uh, an error as he goes wide. That is over the track limits. Yeah, so... What we did mention at the top of the show as well that no one in this category has really grasped the 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 championship with the whole, both hands. Maybe Dylan Tan is now. Uh, he won round three. Looks like he's going to win round four, race one as well. Um, you need to be have that consistency. It's been a little bit up and down from everyone, um, but the man, like I said, who's been the most stable over the last few races, is this man, Dylan Tan. You know, this is a driver we always know has been very quick, but he's been a bit up and down in the past. But he's not now, is he? He certainly isn't, although I can tell you that that lead was at one stage over four seconds. It's down to around about three and a half there as Troy Ammon comes in. It's still a very, very healthy lead with three minutes and 40 seconds still to race. But we have seen Dylan be erratic in the past. He is a young lad. Sometimes the pressure can get to you, as indeed Troy closes that deficit to within three seconds for the first time in about four laps yeah so there's troy in second position he just set the fastest lap of the race in the last lap um but he's bringing maz vilton with him in third position so the two of them are closing down that gap but you're right with only three minutes remaining i don't think there's going to be enough time to challenge the leader maz vilton is putting pressure on the back of troy Iman as well he is the man in the uh black and silver in third place, the overall championship leader, five points clear of Dylan Tan. So what this would do if it remains like this is Dylan Tan would be the new overall championship leader uh, with the first of two races taking place in round four of six. What he's got to do is hold on. Jim Musvilton, tell you what, that's a steely-eyed stare Musvilton has, isn't it? Yeah, as he goes to turn 11 there, it's just all over the back of him, just... Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think it's close enough. Um, there'll be two more laps after this. Yes, they're coming. Yeah, two more laps after this. Two more laps after this. Dylan Tan has re-established that 3.2 second lead. Ms. Vilton, I think, is conscious of uh, uh, Troy Iman in front of him, and Iman is conscious of Ms. Vilton behind him, all of which helps Dylan Tan. I spoke a little bit uh, soon, I think, because that gap has been reduced to 2.5 seconds. Wow. Top left of your screen, we're getting uh, uh, the differentials. He's kept it around about three or four seconds for a long time, Dylan Tan. Behind there, um, Harris Zephy has got himself back into P5 because Martin has dropped off the radar. Yeah, well, wow. some time Martin. Let's look back a bit further. Brad McCombs, uh, he's in position 10. Uh, he's got a Sev Tagula all over the back of him. Um, haven't seen much of Brad or Sev, actually. Sev is a long-time racer at RGP. He's been a bit quiet lately. I think he's based in the UK these days, so he has to worry about ping. Oh, he's having a look on Brad, though. Uh, gets a good exit out of turn two, and he's going to be in the slipstream down the long, long straight now. That's international recognition. McCombs allows Tagulo to go through. Tagulo from Philippines. He moves into P10. It's not a great day for the Philippines. Oli Aquino, who was fourth in the overall standings from Seven Star Garage, he's only in P12 and has found himself under pressure from Ryan Keith, who had a good uh, qualification but hasn't had a, a good race. He's down in 13 just in the points and Rosen Royf also in there as well. Back up to the front though. Ms. Vilton tries to make a move for P2. Currently in P3. When we, are we on the last lap? Ms. Vilton oh. makes a move again. Times that one to absolutely perfection. Iman has to respond. Can Iman respond? Ms. Vilton, no. Oh, he was just biding his time there. Was the championship leader. Bit of a wiggle as Iman has a look on the tail of Jim Ms. Vilton. But Mills Ms. Vilton has got himself through into P2, Alex. Wow. So Troy, they defended so well, but then made a mistake on the exit of the corner. Allowed Ms. Vilton through. Through. So just a small mistake there, but that's allowed Mas and you know Mas Vilton though he's a cool, calm collector like you said. So despite all this up and down and stuff, we have the two championship leaders back at the front. We certainly do. Dylan Tan second in the championship on seventy-two points. Mas Vilton leading on seventy-seven. Uh, two races today plus qualification but Dylan Tan looks like he's going to really really make a, a fabulous start to the season he is on his last lap as he goes round the hairpin for the final time he's just got to make sure he keeps this one flat 
through seven and then into the intricate part just make sure his line is good he can let that lead that three second lead just diminish a little bit and still be comfortable for the victory Alex yeah it says we are riding with Jin Mas Vilton he's in second position behind Dylan um, the green car of Ironman, though, he's dropped back a bit in third position. They've got the two blue cars of Tony Falk and Harris Zephy in fourth and fifth position. And Harry Zephy, I think he'll be... I'm not sure what kind of a mood he'll be in because he had a good qualification. He was on pole, but he spun off twice. So the fact he's going to pick up 11 points, uh, seemingly, will be good for him. But Dylan Tan comes through to take the victory. Dylan Tan will move to the top of the championship standings. It's his third victory of the season. He won in mid -Hio. He won the reverse grid race at Daytona Road Course. And Dylan Tan makes it three victories in the last four races. Terrific job from the young fella. Quickly out. That's a toilet break going on before the reverse grid race kicks in. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, um, um, I know real life drivers have real small bladders, so they're always trying to take their toilet Far breaks. Far too much detail. Far, Far too, too much detail. But I also think the sim drivers are the same. They're in and out of their seats all the time. It's quite incredible. But this man, Dylan Tan, he, well, the car's still going around, but he's off, obviously, for a comfort break. Um, Jin Maz Vilton, though, you know, he's second position. He's now second in the championship. Reverse grid race, though, coming. The, the pressure's really starting to pile on because, you know, we're getting to the, the serious end of the, grid, of the championship now, and, and um, now he's throwing a reverse grid race where anything can happen. It's going to be interesting to see which of these two drivers come out on top. Troy Ammon will be very happy with his first um, podium position of the season. That'll be worth 16 points in the first. We're just waiting the final um, results. And not only does he pick up a podium, he also picks up the fastest lap, does Troy Ammon. So an 18-point haul for him. Plus, he was decent in qualification. But Dylan Tan will pick up the 25 to add to the points that he secured in qualification. He will be the new championship leader going into race two. The reverse grid race. Whew. So, well done from Dylan Tan. He's young. You can see it. He's a young kid. But my word, he's got a mature head on his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, it's so nice to see how much he's improved, you know. I uh, remember when he... So just, well, actually, it feels like a year ago, but it was only a few <laughs> it was months ago. a season ago, ago Alex. A, a season, season ago. Um, he, he ended up taking out some of the fast guys, but just breaking so late in one of the gold races and just taking out like two cars. Um, and he's really come on strong since then, you know. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, very pleased to see the improvement. OK, our focus instantly turns towards the reverse grid race. The drivers got 20 seconds just to work on their tactics. Not quite sure how far down the grid the, the coin toss got us. Gr uh, red lights are on. It's uh, Cheng Ung who's on a pole alongside Brad McCombs, the American. What kind of a star can McCombs get? It's a solid star from him. There's a, a lot of rubber burning behind them as drivers try to make up just a little bit of ground. But Brad McCombs has got off to a great start. And also he's taken with him Ryan Keith as well. Ryan Keith, who didn't have a great race number one, is in a perfect position to try to make amends for that in race two, Alex. So it's McCombs. Followed by Keith, followed by Roif. Yeah, really good. Um, whoa, and then Septigalo, they're also trying to make his move up. Oh, so that, that, that midfield battle there is really getting tight. A lot of fast drivers up there. I can also tell you that Dylan Tan is up to 11th. Jin Mas Vilton is 12th. Norris O oh is right behind them in 13th from Japan. But right at the front, Brad McCombs leading nicely. Oh, he runs a bit wide of the hairpin. Ryan Keefe's going to get a good exit. But McCombs somehow recovers that and leads at the moment. This good fight now between Septagulo and going down the inside. It's um, Triple L, I think. That's Triple L going down the inside of Tagulo. Um, and, and takes a position. Yeah, Triple L moves himself up into P4. That's a, a good manoeuvre from him. Septagulo in the easy to distinguish uh, blue and white. Behind him, he's got uh, Jung Chang Ung. But there is Triple L, the bronze championship leader. Contact behind them. I think that's Tony Fock and Troy Iman just coming together, wheel to wheel. They come together once again. We're focused on Triple L in P4, but there really is a battle royale going on for P7. There is wow. Troy Iman in the green and yellow, the Stratos. And Tony Fock is there, and they have twice come together. Their wheels have touched, Alex, which will yeah. potentially cost them later in the race. Yeah, let's see. Oh, look, oh, both Stratus cars running wide. Wow, what's going on there? Both of them struggling. 
Um, so yes, the, the full damage is on. They can't afford those touches, and I, I think that's put Troy Ironman out. Well, someone out. Who is with him? Well, oh, Troy, Troy is down to oh. P11 and 12 and still dropping. Don't know what's happened to those Stratos cars. That wasn't a tactic. But there yeah. is Troy. You picked up a, a podium position in race number one. Brad McCombs has dropped down to P4. He was the leader, and Tagulo is going to go past him. Uh, uh, Tagulo in the... Blue and white will move into P4 instantaneously. No, no, McCombs leaves the braking late. Ooh, they're so, so close. And McCombs is just bullied out of that position as they go into the hairpin turn six. Or oh, was he bullied? The answer is no. Yeah, McCombs doing a good job that he knows about that hairpin. That hairpin, it's okay if you want to go wide and miss the apex and go wide as long as you get the exit because there's a lot of grip on the outside. But then he messes up the next corner. Tagulo oh, spins. Oh, wow. Tagulo spins. Are you apportioning any blame there, Alex Young? No, McCombs made a mistake, but um, it's um, and that caused Tagulo to spin. But it's not, um, it's not something you plan. So for me, that's a racing incident. Okay, as we just focus on Brad McCombs for a moment, he's got himself into P4. Remember, he started on pole position, exactly the man I wanted you to go to, Dylan Tan, the overall championship leader and the race winner in race number one. Got himself up into P7, but look who is right on his tail, Jinbas Vilton. Yes, Jinbas Vilton, they're both coming through the field. They've been a bit careful. Um, I think it's top 15 reverse grid for this race, so... They have come through from, I think, 14 for 15 for 13 and 15 to 8 for 9th. Um, but yeah, oof, this is going to go with the whole race, isn't it? Certainly is. Plenty of time. That's the good news for them. In front of him, uh, he's got Aquino. We're on board with Dylan Tan, currently in P7. He's the first of those silver and black cars. He's got to get in front of uh, Oli Aquino, the best of the Filipinos at the moment. And then Tony Fock ahead of them. In fact, it's Brad McCombs who's holding up that little train of traffic, which is enabling Dylan Tan to maybe make a move. One, two, go past McCombs. So Aquino and Tony Fock go past McCombs. Dylan Tan and Jim Vilton right on the American's tail. Yeah, it's a good move there. Uh, so McCombs had a great uh, what, reverse grid start and um, was leading comfortably. A couple small mistakes creeping in here and there. Um, and that's why he's getting, starting to get shuffled back into the pack. Um, oh, look, Dylan Tan, though. He's all over the back of him trying to make the move work. Um, coming out of turn 11. Oh, Dylan Tan's in a tough position because he wants to make the move. But he's got Jin Mas Vilton all over the back of him. Um, well, they go. You can't really dive down the inside. You can't dive someone into this left hander here. Um, it's because you break so late for it. It's it's really a risky move. I would say they've got plenty of time, but these 15 minute sprint races disappear very, very quickly, and so they'll want to get past McCombs because he is holding up the traffic. He's holding up Dylan Tan and Jin Musvilton. We've not mentioned the race leader for a while. Ryan Keith is the man who is leading the race, and he is on lap four, and he's got himself a healthy two second lead from Triple L from Hong Kong Rosen Roif the best of the Indonesians the only Indonesian has got himself in P3 at the moment good to see Rosan up at the top of the uh, of the pack and Rosan had issues this week I know he could not practice anywhere near as much as he wanted to so um, this is a nice surprise um, when you don't put in the practice it does affect your pace a bit so he'll be really pleased to be up to P3 uh, just down at the end of that long parabolica Ooh. onto the hairpin and there's a move McCombs lost the place wins it back and is on being attacked either side Ms. Vilton and Dylan Tan either side Ms. Vilton is the man who's edged in front McCombs once again knows the line to take into turn 7 but is bullied off by Ms. Vilton as they come into turn 8 that right hander blocks off McCombs to stop Dylan Tan coming through normally Dylan would react to that kind of aggression from Brad McCombs but Ms. Vilton is the man who's benefited most from that half lap of action wow. Alex yeah so Ms. Vilton did a hail Mary into the hairpin went super late and managed to slide by both cars um, and that is one of the key moves for the championship I tell you because they, they, they're going to be very close these two drivers all the way and it's those sort of small moves where you take a high risk and when it works like that he went from behind the championship leader to now 
one place and another car in, in front of the championship leader. So that was a really good move by Ms. Vilton. And as we can see, Brad McCombs was actually holding up the traffic because Ms. Vilton's immediately been able to take a second, a second and a half off American while poor old Dylan Tan is desperately trying to find a way past the American ahead of them. Oli Aquino has a little bit of a wiggle in P5. Tony Fock is the man ahead of him in the all blue car. Roy Triple L and Ryan Keith are still leading the way. We'll get it to you in a minute, Ryan, I promise. We will give you some attention, but what's going on in the lower reaches is really important. Dylan Tan makes the move, and eventually it looks like he's going to get past McCombs. Dylan on the inside, McCombs forced wide. Dylan Tan up into P7. Yes, he makes the move, so he'll be super happy with that. Finally gets it done. That should be him clear. clear. Now he needs to clean up that gap and get up to Mas Vilton, who's just in front of him. But like you said, let's go back to the leader, eh? There you go, Ryan. There's your moment in the spotlight. Don't muck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have him on Zoom at the moment, but I'd love to have him on Zoom because he has <laughs> mucked it up a few times. A Stratos driver, um, karting driver. Uh, very, very good driver, actually. Um, but yes, a bit accident prone in the Sims. Like you said, Triple L in second. That's a good recovery from him after a bad race one. Roseanne Royf. And of course, you could see Tony Fook, this train of cars behind him. Tony Fook, Oliver Aquino, right there. And Mas Vilton is now on the back of that train, too. Certainly. I tell you what, you can see how much McCombs was holding up Dylan Tan because the differential between Ms. Vilton and Dylan Tan is a good two seconds. So Dylan's got a lot of work to do if he's going to get up to Jim Ms. Vilton, who may, may, if he can get up into the top reaches here, be able to reduce that Dylan Tan lead at the top of the standings. Who are we on board? One board with Roseanne. Now, Roseanne, well, he's holding up a train. Tony Fock having a real look around the outside. And Tony Fock, he's got the slipstream, expecting a move. Alex. Yeah, he is. He's on the outside of the corner, though. So he pulls out the slipstream. Rosan's not defending it. So Tony's going to send it down the inside. He does. He does send it. Can he get the car stop in time? Yes, he can. Look at the traffic jam. And Mas Vilton, opportunistic, just goes around the outside of Oliver Aquino. Um, and will he hold the position? Got Rosan Royf in front of both of them. Uh, wow, goes through the corner. He's got the inside for the next corner. So he should take the move on Aquino. He does. Wow, good move there by Maz Vilton. Roseanne Royf still holds on to a position near the top. Uh, Oli Aquino is now beginning to put pressure on Jin Maz Vilton. Yeah, Maz Vilton, he, he, he slowly worked his way. What have we got? 5.45 to go. And you can see there on uh, board with Roseanne Royf, he's got Maz Vilton behind him. Tony Fock in front of him. It's a, it's a difficult position to be for Roseanne because he'll be looking forward and looking backwards, love his profile pick, by the way. Very yeah. elegant, sir. <laughs> exactly right. And the, um, as built in his profile picks, um, a purple helmet with 44. I wonder who is he's, he, who his favorite driver is. Maybe a son, Lewis Hamilton. Um, but yes, Mas Vilton, he'll be very happy with that. He's in fourth position, but more importantly, his championship rival is in seventh. Yeah, Dylan Tan has actually, oh, actually got himself into P5, Dylan. What's happened there? Dylan has made a huge move, Alex. Really? In the last uh, two corners, he's got past Royf and Aquino and has got himself back up into P5. Write this young kid off at your peril. Wow, I must have just been, um, I must have been sleeping there because I was looking down the timing screens and looking at the camera angles. I looked up and they were, it was all changed around. Royf and Aquino must have come together or something and, and allowed Dylan Tan to, to make the move. And the youngster has really, really taken advantage of it. It's probably a little bit too far behind for Adamus Vilton or Dylan to get onto a podium because Ryan Keith is running away with this. Triple L in second place. He's got uh, five seconds to make up. Tony Fock in third. Looking good for Hong Kong. If we're talking Nations Cup, Hong Kong will pick up good points in this race. Yeah, they will. We're riding on board with Dan, J Jin Mas Vilton and Dylan Tan is really closing that gap now. You can see how much closer he is to Mas Vilton because he was quite a far back a few laps ago. Um, so it's not over. Championship leader, he'll know his rivals right in front of him and he's going to do everything he can to try and take the place. Yeah, four minutes is, is quite a lot to race. It does disappear very quickly, but uh, four minutes, yep. Yeah, what have we got there? That's three full laps of the track, maybe even more still to come. Yeah, so... As they come through, 3.47 left. Yeah, maybe three full more laps to go. Yeah. Oh, and just in front of them, look at that, Tony Fook, he's right on the inside of Triple L, takes his teammate nicely down the inside, 
just about makes the, the apex. Does he get the, the run he needs? Is Triple L going to come back at him? I think Triple L is going to come back at him. He's back in the slipstream of Tony Falk. This is the long parabolica. It's not a straight, but you're at maximum speed. Just want to get yourself in great position for turn number six, the hairpin. Uh, ahead of them, we're on board here with Triple L, who's in third. You saw Ryan Keith disappear six and a half seconds clear. And for a moment, I thought it was a back marker. There he is at the very top of your screen. Behind them, though, it is beginning to get congested because Dylan has made up a ton of time on Masvilton. Masvilton's pressuring Triple L. Triple L's pressuring Tony Fock. Great couple of laps to come. Great yeah. couple of laps to finish. Yeah, that's right. We'll ride with Dylan Tan now to see if he's as close down that gap. Oh, has ever so slightly, hasn't he? Still got Mas Vilton just in front of him. And then, of course, uh, Triple L and Tony Falk in front of these two as well. So Dylan Tam, as they come in under the grandstand, the corner number 12 is the tight right-hander at uh, Sachs. So we saw him able to hold on to a lead. This time he's going to have to try to come up with the tactics to take certainly one, if not two places, Dylan Tan. Is he, actually, he's not really that close, is he? He's no. a full second down on Ms. Vilton who's been able to pull out and a little bit of time on them. So maybe we were, I was being over-optimistic about thinking Dylan Tan might be able to get into the top four. In the meantime, Ryan Keith, a lonely race, a lonely man. A one-second highlight reel for Ryan Keith there. Yes. <laughs> this battle for second position is heating up, though, isn't it? Tony Falk, Triple L, Maz Vilton, and Dylan Tan. Uh, uh, Roseanne Royf has kind of fallen off the... the, the the gap, the, the back of this battle now at the moment in uh, sixth position. By a good four seconds, Brad McCombs has also gone a long way down. He's dropped down to P9, having started from pole. It means India's Niyogi is uh, challenging Brad McCombs. But we won't focus on that just yet. We will focus on this battle for P2. Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Singapore. That's the battle. Ryan Keats from Singapore is leading the way. Tony leading against Triple L. Can't afford to make mistakes. When you're in the cockpit, Alex, are you looking forward or are you looking <laughs> in that windscreen mirror? Wow. Inexperienced drivers are always looking in the windscreen mirror. But as you get more advanced and more, you know, more experienced, you learn to just look forward. Um, you know if you need to worry about the guy behind. You can always sense him. You develop a sort of a sixth sense for where that driver is. Obviously, you you know, if you make a mistake out of a corner, you're like, okay, well, I'm putting myself under pressure. And you might have to look behind to see where that guy has gone. Whoa, Triple L goes super wide there. It allows Mas Vilton just to close right up on him. Um, so, yeah, but you, you, you know where the drivers are, you know. So you... It's better to, to just focus on the front. Um, and it's something that you just have to learn to do. We are on the final lap. Just gone round the Nord Curve corner. Number one, a tricky corner. Number two coming up. Tony Fock was being given a reprieve there, but Triple L will find himself under real pressure from Mads Vilton. 5.6 seconds, the lead for Ryan Keith. He has been leading this race. He started on the front row of the grid. We wondered if he'd be able to capitalise. It certainly has been able to. Tony Fock and Leung is under pressure from Mads Vilton. Mads Vilton just not close enough though, Alex. Wow, I thought for sure he was going to send it down the inside on in the last lap, but he decided not to. Um, I think he feels he'd rather keep this position. Maybe the risk was too high, especially when he's got his championship rival right behind him. Yeah, Dylan Tanner's rather pulled back a little bit, uh, maybe hoping for a mistake to come from these uh, drivers. Ms. Vilton to maybe crash into the side's hoardings, but Ms. Vilton is going to make a move, you suspect. He's uh, having a, a real look at the tail end of Triple L. Dylan Tan, yeah, he's not real pressing, but uh, Triple L, who was in second place for such a long time, would want to maintain a podium. Up at the front, Ryan Keith is about to take his first victory of the season. First victory ever in e-racing GP, as far as I, I can remember. Ryan Keith from Singapore takes it. He's a good five seconds clear of Tony Fock. A spectacular ending with the victory for Ryan Keith from Singapore. Tony Fock gets second. Triple L holds off Ms. Vilton for third. Tan comes in in fifth place. He will continue to be the overall championship leader at the end of round four. Two more rounds to go. Fastino for Philippines. Niogi gets himself up into seven. Head of Brad McCoons in eighth. Uh, and Tagulo drops down in ninth. Oli Aquino. Not a great day for Philippines and Oli Aquino. 
Yeah, no, it wasn't. So he doesn't pick up any points. The guy in fourth will drop back. This man, though, Ryan Keith. Whew, great to see him win. Drove magnificently, didn't he? No mistakes. Um, good fast laps as well. I don't think he got fastest lap of the race, but um, still really, really good win. Um, and then, of course, the battle for the championship. Maz Vilton, oh, he had to finish in front of Dylan Town, I feel. Um, so, I mean, this was a race. Maz Vilton or Dylan Town could have lost the championship if they'd had a bad one. Both of them were under big pressure to not make any mistakes. Um, and they both came through unscathed. And uh, it's going to be really close in the championship for the two of them. One person we didn't mention much at all because he was never in the reckoning, Harris Zephy out of the points in race number two so the man who was fastest in qualification uh, had uh, a fifth place in race one but zero points in race number two ryan keith though picks up his fa his first ever victory harris zephy as usual there's always a headline with harris he may have not picked up any points for the race but he has picked up the fastest lap but Tony Fock and Triple L make it a good day for Hong Kong. Jin Vilton and Dylan Tan continue to battle it out. They're at the very, very top of the championship standings. Faustino, best of the Filipinos and best results ever also for Niyogi from India. Oof, that was a <laughs> an eventful race. Um, very, very interesting to watch. Um, so it really, you know... There were coming to this weekend. I thought maybe there were four or five drivers in with a shout for the championship for the silver silver championship, but now it's really come down to two, isn't it? I think Dylan and Maz Vilton, both from Singapore, they're looking a lot more consistent, and it looks like they can put together a run, and it'll be between those two for the championship. And after qualification, though, Harry Zeffi must have thought, "Hey, things are going pretty good." You saw his reaction when he got pole position. He was cheering, but fifth place in the race. He was doing well when he span in race number one. Yeah. Then no points in race number two when he couldn't make any headway. What, what, what's going on with Harris? Because he can normally be so aggressive. Yeah, I, I think it's just too many mistakes. You know, um, maybe he gets a bit tense or something in the race conditions. He doesn't choose the right moves all the time. Um, reverse good races, I have seen him come through the pack quite well, but I've also seen him not. Like, like today, he didn't have a good race. So I, I just experience, I guess. Just needs a bit more experience. Needs to know when to pick his moves, when the decision making is the right way to do it. Because um, he's definitely got the pace to win, you know. If you just look at his pace alone, he should be fighting for the championship too. And Ryan Keith, that last, finds himself yeah. on the winner's rostrum. It's a, it's a good result because we often see him competing at the front end of races. Here he was on the front row yeah. of the grid for the reverse, so he, he got the, a little bit of the luck of the draw. But my word, did he capitalise on it. Yeah, I'm really pleased to see him. Uh, the driver from Stratus Motorsport, you know, did a really good job. Um, yeah, so good, good, good to see that happen. Maybe that can be the sort of result that can give him the confidence to try and propel it on and, and, and get more results like that because he, he needs to keep cultivating these races. Okay, so we are on the round four is now complete. There are two more rounds still to go. It's pretty close at the top between Dylan Tan uh, and Jin Masvilt. And I, in, by my calculations, I think Dylan is just top, but we will confirm that on social media. Of course, we'll confirm that to the race as well because race control might have one or two little incidents to deal with, although it looked pretty clean. There haven't been that many incidents at the uh, Hockenheim ring, Alex. Yeah, I think, I think that was pretty clean as well. I don't think Silver would have much... Um, so, well, let's hope. I, we never know. We'll, we'll see. The stewards will be. Uh, will the stewards will let us know in a while. They certainly will. So, silver is complete. We have got the gold race to come. Again, it'll be a 15 minute sprint followed by a reverse grid 15 minutes. That is coming up just in about uh, three or four minutes' time. You are watching e racing GP. Things to be aware of organizing e racing championship without race room. First, no automated leaderboard would always be labor intensive. Elimination round would be the only way to filter the winners, having the participants adhering to the schedule would be a huge test. We need to know the task will get bigger when participants increases. Time consuming. Organizing e-racing championship without race room, it's all need run manually to take and down the participants and eliminate them from first round group to final round group because it is manual human labor. They're bound to be human error. Manual human labor would have a price tag for the man hours involved. New participants would never have chance. The e-racing clubs in the world will send their best racers to participate the race. But that means your championship exposure is just limited to the e-racing clubs. Why choose race room? 
R3E official championship have fully automated leaderboard. Participants can log in anytime to lead the fastest lap time within the qualifying period. Each of the racers already have their ranks with race room. Next, save time. You can have unlimited amounts of participants in a super short time to qualifying them to final race. Race room can cover unlimited amount of participants. We have a full automated esports ecosystem from qualifying leaderboard to broadcast AI. Besides, race room's free contents lets everyone can participate to the race.